the consensus is is that it's already bulletproof that it could it could be a robo taxi tomorrow if it had to be i'm going all in pushing out the robo taxi platform half of which could be robo taxi half not but the, the line will be dedicated and why would that be huge for a fast ramp tesla shanghai ramped the modified model 3 virtually without slowdown they went from nothing to 30,000 a week mm -hmm. in like a month Hello everyone, welcome to Next Big Future. I have my good friend Randy with me. So here is a case where I am more bullish than, than Randy about FSD and RoboTaxi. I think we can have a half million RoboTaxi next year, um, maybe even a million. So, but uh, Randy doesn't think so. Um, so I will present my case first and then we'll, Randy submit his case and then we'll debate and discuss. The core information that we have about how good uh, full self-driving is, uh, which does full self-driving supervise, is the crowdsourced information from uh, Tesla FSD tracker. So, no, so we have. So, so you want to first make the case that there will be a reason to build uh, a dedicated cyber right. cab or robo taxi vehicle next year? Is that your right? Right. First, okay. we go over the fact that FSD has to be good enough. Okay. Right? Right. So, so we see that. Um, you know, looking over time, uh, version 11 had about 101 miles per intervention, 56 miles um, per um, four. This is version 11. If you look in the middle of the chart, you had that 100 to 56 miles per intervention on city miles, 106 uh, overall miles on okay. it. The FSD for, for highway miles up until this point had not yet come off of autopilot highway. So that's more of a coded system. Some neural network has, but not the end-to-end -end neural network has not been done for highway yet. Right. So the FSD is doing city driving. And so you had that 56 to 82 miles on city driving in the version 11 timeframe. And then we got 12.3. There were times that, that the cross information had yet at as high as 200 miles, but now it's kind of settled into 196 overall, 120 um, for city driving. And now 12.5 is for 12.50 is coming in at 617 miles between critical interventions and 870 miles on uh, overall. So that means that 617 miles is about five times as much as 118 mile city for a 12.3.6, which was a, a huge step up. Mm -hmm. Just as a, <clears throat> to orient people, the um, altimeter capital, $10 billion fund, sent someone over to China, tested all their systems, all the self-driving systems, they all use LIDAR. And those, um, they said, were about version 11-ish. Okay. Uh, so they, they tested the various systems. They've been using the uh, Tesla system, version 11, version 12, et cetera. And they say the China systems with LIDAR at about the stage of version 11. Okay. Right? And the people who say, well, the LiDAR guys, they've removed drivers from cars, right? You know, they've done a few hundred cars, you know, Apollo Go in China, Waymo in the United States. They've removed drivers. So clearly they're ahead. They've been doing that for a few years. They removed drivers, whatever. So the, the thing is, they have remote drivers. It's like someone at a gaming console, three screens, got a little steering wheel for their video game. And they take over driving. And pretty much there is no unsupervised car, robocar, anywhere in the world right now. Uh -huh. Either you have the driver in the car or you have a driver outside the car. There could be some situations where you might be able to have one guy monitoring two cars. But usually that doesn't happen because they got to take over in a split second. I right? see. Yeah. And people say, well, you know, I don't believe they've been running you know, 100 cars and they have you know, 100 no drivers. Why are they spending $2 billion a year, have 3,000 staff, and only have 400 cars? If they got it solved, if they can go to like, you know, five cars per driver, how come they don't have, you know, 1,000 people driving it and 10,000 cars? Right, right, right. Because they can't do it. Okay. So just to be clear, my case is 
None of them can do it. We've seen that for crews. We know that after accident, they said they had one and a half drivers per monitored car. So more drivers outside than inside a car. Right. And Apollo Go, we've had video showing of their stations. Waymo has it because they also report, hey, we have disengagements every, you know, 17,000 miles or whatever. And we drove like seven million. So that means you had, you know, 100 disengagements, right? Right. How do you disengage if no one's monitoring your car? Right. If no one's in the car, someone has to be outside the car, ready to take over a split second, right? So we just haven't seen them. They've hidden their remote driver, but they have them. Right. Okay. So now going back to this. So so 12.5 got five times better, right? 12.51 seemed to have uh, some minor issues. They'll tweak it with the next point release, as we saw with 12.35, 12.34, then get back up. But clearly they're near 1,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right. just a, a result. They could be at one thousand miles. They could be at two thousand miles. And also, if we look over at the kinds of disengagements, the speed bump pothole was five. Wrong speed was five. Obstacle was three. Right, lane issue one. So before, and here's the before twelve and three six. We see lane issue two hundred eighty one lane issues. Mm. Out of, you know, they're, they're driving a lot more, but the lane issue the top thing. Wrong speed with the next thing. They, you know. Obstacles was and potholes were, were way down there, right? So basically, there are two main issues of lane speed and uh, lane selection and speed were, were basically solved going from three twelve point three six to twelve point five, right? And now you're left with some minor obstacle issues, and there is still some uh, speed. And you know, if we go back over to the um, to the previous one, it's um, this is a navigation, speed bump, pothole. And speed bump pothole is not a critical issue, right? right? The obstacle is the, the critical issue or another car, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, and most of the time that's not happening. They've gotten most of that situation solved. So we're going to get merging of highway and city dr- driving systems on that stack. What does that mean? That means that... Um, City driving is already eight times safer, 10 times safer than human, right? That's based on statistics for autopilot. One accident every 8 million miles, right? right. Versus one accident in 1 million miles for a Tesla car with passive systems, one accident 500,000 miles for the average US car. So way right. safer already. The neural system, they will not replace it until they see their own data saying it's better. Sure. Right? So then you'll have a better highway system compared with a better city driving system. No problems handing off in between because there'll be no handoff, right? And they've gotten everything solved. They have to pick up some, some obstacle stuff and they get reversed so they can then get out of a situation. So I say that they basically will have it solved, 12.6, 12.7 latest, and it could take one to two months. So basically, highly reasonable chance by the October 10th um, Robot Hack Reveal Day and by the end of the year, they will then have it solved, right? right? So can, I want to com- so my fast ramp theory for robo taxi. Sure, we know that. By the way, by the way, so far we, so far we pretty much agree. Okay, uh, I, I'm using you're using stats. I'm using more the experience of all the guys who are on this channel on my channel, um, and uh, and the ones that I'm reading about on X and watching their videos on X, and the the consensus is is that it's already bulletproof that it could it could be a robo taxi tomorrow if it had to be right okay so here's the fast ramp part of it so we know from um tesla china vp grace Tao, right that the tesla shanghai facility has had an increase of about 30 40 percent in production she said instead of putting on a car every 45 seconds like last year putting a car every 30 seconds so that means instead of making 1.1 million cars, you can make 1.5 million cars, right? From Ch- Tesla Shanghai, right. full production, right? So what do we, we know that Elon had wanted to go from the uh, Walter Eisen um, autobiography, he wanted to go all in on RoboTax. Mm-hmm. So now we have it here. How would he go more all in on RoboTax? Half of the production in China could be fully dedicated to robo taxi. Mm-hmm. Because if I have 1.5 million capacity, 
750,000, I make my model threes and, and, and Ys for China and some of Asia. If I'm 100,000 short, because I was doing some exporting, I can export out of um, Europe into you know Australia or some other locations, right? So if I'm, plus also there could be, if I was to make a mix of um, same platform, RoboTaxi and non-RoboTaxi, but the same platform, right? Mm -hmm. I can say, I'm going all in, pushing out the RoboTaxi platform, half of which could be RoboTaxi, half not, but um, the, the line will be dedicated. And why would that be huge for a fast ramp? Tesla Shanghai ramped the um, modified Model 3 virtually without slowdown. They went from nothing to 30,000 a week mm -hmm. in like mm -hmm. a month, right? Mm -hmm. So the same team could do this fast ramp. And they changed a high percentage of the components on the Model 3 um, new uh, updated right. Highland version, right? So you would make a new vehicle possibly that has common parts with Model 3 and Y. You can make it, you know, you have a um, not fully unboxed version, you know, for this initial vehicle. That would then say have 50, 60% common parts, 70% common parts with a Model Y, but you just make it shorter, compact hatchback, right? So then, but you're designing it to get fast ramp. We're going to do, get it so that the China team can do another fast ramp, just like they did for Model 3, right? And it's like not mixing lines with 3 and Y. Those are separate from, from that. Because they have two facilities there. And I think they probably have two lines in each one, right? So then Model 3 and Y in one building, and then um, the RoboTaxi setup, and the um, non-RoboTaxi same platform vehicle. So how do they prevent cannibalization of the low end model three from the uh, the new vehicles you're making one if it's robot taxi it's easy whoever buys it individual company whoever must buy car eight thousand dollar profit and fsd 100 percent fsd you cannot not buy it right so then there's no cancellation because now i would get sixteen thousand dollars of profit if you're buying this instead of my model three where i make it eight thousand but then only ten percent by FSD, then I'm still making more money, right? And I could also hold pricing a bit higher up. I only sell a slightly more premium model to reduce the gap, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever I, I manage, whatever my production and demand is based on the pricing of it. I don't drop, only drop $2,000, $3,000, but you're getting a shorter vehicle. So I'm, I'm making the choice more neutral or ho however I want to, to, to game it. So, but also, Austin and Berlin can have full dedicated lines for the new vehicle if there's also a demand there. So if it's fully solved and demand is off the hook for, for ro robotaxi type vehicles, then the capacity is there. As we know, they have the capacity of 3 million. They can go even higher than that. Um, but I'm saying for a fast ramp next year, China has shown they can do the Model 3 fast ramp. And that if I design things properly, they can do a fast ramp up to, you know, five thousand, even a million, you know, seven fifty thousand some vehicles from China full of next year. Because we still have five more months to get there, right? So they're getting it ready, whatever they need to do, aligning things to to achieve that. So you have another point of view. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to congratulate you. I had one of the weirdest dreams the other night. I was, the, mm -hmm. I told my wife, it was the weird, I think, you know, it wasn't like I was trapped in a building or I was going to die. It was just really weird in another way, but you beat me. Okay. <laughs> okay so let's see, how do I, how do I count the ways? First of all, I think that Elon is very interested in making his one-time um, largest increase in valuation uh, story come true. Mm -hmm. That there's uh, 10 million now vehicles out there. I don't know, almost all of them that are ready to be robo-taxis. Uh, those 10 million vehicle, or there will be 10 million, um, those vehicles, he wants them to switch over to robo-taxi and make money uh, and he doesn't want, I don't think, to terribly get in their way. He doesn't want to be looked at as competing with those robotaxis in the very beginning. 
So I think there's going to be a huge emphasis on the on the uh, the uh, how does he call it the Airbnb version of the robotaxi fleet in the very beginning. Now, I think that one of the reasons why we need a Tesla fleet is because of some of the um, the financial problems that there are with a uh, Airbnb version in terms of Friday nights or even rush hours, et cetera, et cetera, peak flows. Now, the opposite side of my own argument is that somehow Waymo has been able to do that with only a few hundred cars. They haven't got their they haven't got their clients screaming and yelling that they don't have enough vehicles at certain hours. Therefore, I'm never going to use it again. So maybe the novelty or something is making that okay. But probably by the middle to the end of the first year of the Tesla fleet, I think you got to have those Tesla cars available everywhere all the time that people want them or pretty you know pretty close. Um, so therefore, I think that's going to be a huge emphasis. So I don't think there will be a need to uh, do something as radical as you're suggesting. The opposite side of it is that I think he also, for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm not clear on what this is. Well, okay, yeah. I don't think that the transition to robotaxis will be that fast. So I think that in the United States, it's going to have to get down to pretty close to 50 cents a mile before I'm going to start taking a robotaxi all the time. And I'm a pretty good example because I'm older than dirt. <laughs> and I only have one car <laughs> between my wife and I. So I would be a very good example of somebody who would be taking robotaxis uh, instead of the car, or maybe even getting rid of that last car uh, and taking robotaxis all the time. And I'm not very close to that if it's only, if it's two bucks a, uh, two bucks a mile. Um, and so I think in the beginning, it will be two bucks a mile. It'll be a while before it comes down. So in China, I don't see the, I don't see the rush at all to get into it unless it's for those other companies. And you've wisely, you've been so far ahead on that. Nobody else is thinking like you are with regard to these other companies buying thousands and thousands of vehicles from Tesla. So that could be a very good reason to really mm -hmm. ramp up as quickly as possible in Shanghai. Um, and uh, your idea of, of basically using up this new capacity uh, to accomplish that would be would be good. Can it be done that fast? I suspect just kind of trying to think like Elon, he's going to want this to be the Robotex or the cyber cab car. He's not going to want it to be some version or some, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I've always thought that there would be a, a robot uh, or a cyber cab that would also come out with a steering wheel and, a, and pedals. I don't think that anymore. I think the, the cyber cab is going to be an experience car. It's going to be something when you get in it, it's going to be, it's a lounge, as he said the other, was it he that said it or somebody else, a, a lounge on wheels. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like your living room or the, the coolest room in your house that you set mm -hmm. up with your TV and the whole nine yards. It's just going to be a cool place. And that is not necessarily what the compact Gen 3 is going to be. In, in my humble opinion, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I see two different things there, and I think it'll be okay. I think he, I think he'll want to wait for the unboxed option on both of those in terms of the full-on Gen Three and in terms of the full-on uh, Cyber Cab. Uh, anyway, that's that's my version. What's your, what, what do you have? So, so my question then is: You have half of uh, Giga Shanghai. That can make 750,000 cars or something next year. Yeah. yeah. Right. So supposedly it's this 2.5 car. And the 2.5 car is, I think, you know, also 2.5 cyber cap. Right. So yeah. if I think the demand on Robotaxi is a price function of how much you can charge for it. Right. Right. Absolutely. That right now Waymo only has demand for five hundred in San Francisco and 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 Phoenix because they're charging two dollars per ride. More. Yeah. Yeah. yeah two dollars, three dollars per ride. Right. So they're not really undercutting Uber. Right. Right. So if you're gonna do that, and China has more $2, demand. Two to three dollars a mile. A yeah. mile, two to three dollars a mile. Right. So China has more demand for their robotaxis because they're subsidizing. They're, they're losing more money on it. 
all of them are losing money like crazy because they only have um, like a million miles per quarter, right? right. You know, right. a million miles per month right. versus Uber at 27 million miles per day. Uber right. is at like 10 billion miles per year, yeah. right? Yeah. And these guys are less, you know, like 5 million miles. Maybe this year they get to 10 million, 20 million mm -hmm. miles per year. So they're 1,000 times less than Uber. Uber making $40 billion per year them being that they're at that, that $20 million, $40 million level. Meaningless numbers relative to how much they're losing, right? So when Tesla comes out, there's no point to doing small numbers, 5,000, 10,000, other than some regulatory thing where they're limited by it, right? They said, doesn't move the needle. Right. Right. So they would come, if they could come in, they'd come in heavy. One, they to activate the full network, like you're saying, Right. Mm -hmm. And they can go where they want to start doing massive trials of robot taxi with safety drivers. Right. Because mm -hmm. you have to get the, 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 the stuff done. Right. So you're going to lose money year one with safety drive, or you, you know, if you're pricing it to get people to use it. Right. I want people to use it. I'm pricing people to use it. I sell a safety driver. So I haven't cut out that part of my cost structure where I'm paying the person to do it right why would you use a safety driver if you've already proven concept that you don't need a safety driver you've already done that with the uh fsd by the end of this year where you can sleep and so why would you need it? i i i'm not I, I don't think you know i don't think um 30 days of testing with a few thousand cars is enough data well okay do but, I, but do you really believe that they'll be able to do even the 2.5 in january i mean i think it's i think it'd be a, a 2.5 version of the cyber cab by january i'm thinking it's more like march so that would give them 90 days to be testing so so one i think that january is possible but okay. if that's more a question of like you know when were they activating their model three updated line, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever they start it, once they start it, it, it ramps, right? They have it set up in China where they're ready to go. They can ramp fast. Once they, once they, they, they say, okay, start, go, boom, yeah. right? Yeah. So whether that's January, whether that's March, that's a, is the car design, is the other stuff ready? But once you kind of like gear it up to it, then it, it goes off to the races, right? So it could be January, it could be March. Right, could be be later, but I'm saying that they're working towards getting a fast ramp because they have the capacity now. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. they said that right. they can shove out the cars, but they can't do it because there's not enough demand from all three and one. Right. right, right. So it, the only thing to suck up that demand is a new vehicle. You mm -hmm. know, we could say, okay, maybe once it's all the FSD, there's some even more demand for three and Y. Yeah, I think possible, so. but I, think so. I don't think it's it's going to be seven hundred fifty thousand. No, and and again, you you also have the uh, the Juniper improvement, and also the two point five vehicle, uh, mm -hmm. without without you know with, with still having a steering wheel, right? So, so I'm saying that they change course. Yeah, I don't know if, yeah, know if it sucks up that whole three. What would it be three hundred and four hundred thousand additional vehicles uh, in Shanghai or not? They'd also have a hundred a hundred uh, yards of additional factory space now, which might be used utilized to create some additional i'm not sure right so i'm saying that there's gonna be teething pain uh -huh. with your robo taxi launch mm -hmm. right and uh, stretching out the time period of getting to adapt i say they shock and awe with a dollar per mile maybe 75 cents per mile in, in china in they have to go even cheaper yeah. china's at like 50 cents per mile already 25 cents per mile they have to come out even lower priced in China. Right. But those per mile charges, even if I'm losing money as I'm getting going, uh -huh. it's like I am need to change people's psyche yeah. about RoboTax. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? I need to come out with that low price because it's, it's not the same as Waymo at $2 and 500 vehicles, right? That is meaningless. We have to like come in and say, Tesla RoboTaxi is at 50 cents in the United States or, or, or a buck. And I say, if we're coming out hard, we have a lot of cars. We have the pricing of the um, of the fleet. 
of where we Airbnb it. And we're going to start coming out big with all the tests and all the things, partners and other stuff to go hard with those vehicles. And we'll start making a bunch of them. We'll get partners to buy them. Or if not, then we will make them and they will be fully generating robo taxi revenue at the whatever thing. But with not like we have to like keep coming down in price, like them dialing down the price. If 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 they're driving a hundred million miles, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I have um a hundred thousand vehicles, right? And they're each driving a thousand miles um uh, every every month, right? So hundred million miles, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that, and I'm losing, um, initially 50 cents or, or a buck per mile. So I'm losing a hundred million dollars per mile, uh, per month. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, right. Yeah. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to get to that billion miles, you know, because, you know, 10,000 miles per, per month and stuff like that. I'm going to get there. Right. But I'm training people up to say it is that inexpensive. Right. And, you know, coming and, you know, in terms of like pricing initially, like because I'm initially coming in um, at, um, you know, different pricing for different regions. So if I'm going out hard in China because mm -hmm. we have the deals, have the permits and we can go to seven hundred cities. If there's no city competition, you know, competition yet for my own robot taxi fleet, I can choose not to go aggressive on pricing. I, I can change my pricing globally based upon that, right? So do, then- Do ahead. we have, a, we don't have this issue in China, but in the United States and Europe, Australia, et cetera, uh, Canada, don't we have an issue of fair, of, of um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the owner of the car, you or me, and we've got our vehicles out there, I get to set the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Tesla can't make me go to 50 cents or go to a dollar. Right. Maybe in China they can't. I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. their rules at all, but I do know the rules in Europe. I knew them here, Canada, almost certainly Australia. So if I can charge whatever I want, I'm going to charge as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Now, Tesla's probably going to give a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I'd say, look, we think it'd be a good idea to go all go out there, you know, at some low price. That's kind of what uh, let's take the McDonald's example. You know, mm -hmm. McDonald's say this is our recommended price. Yeah. But boy, when you go to New York City on Fifth Avenue, it's a lot yeah. more <laughs> than yeah. it is anywhere else in the country. Um, so so you don't have to. You can it's just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Um so but you think uh uh you think the recommendation would be to not uh cream not uh get the cream off the milk huh yeah yeah i, I would say it would be recommendation would be to go like like a buck a mile something like that in, in you know, come in come in hard right um kill, but kill over you know, a weekend <laughs> right right you know it, but it depends upon the situation like if like you would find out how much demand there is at two bucks or a buck fifty Right, and then people can do surge pricing stuff where I'm only going to do it, you know, at the time. And initially, until the regulatory thing lifts wherever they are, and it could right. lift really, really early in China. It could lift early in some states, where okay, now you don't need to have the driver, and then that would give more flexibility to the person to the to price it, right? But my point would be that. Elon would choose not to be dainty about going with how many how many vehicles they're going to make, right? Because even if they're underutilized initially, they're going to be underutilized at some point until people get used to it, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So why should we hold back on production, right? While this is happening, yeah. right? Yeah. That if yeah. I had the means to go to high production. Yeah. Well, for I, I will say this for sure. You have, you have added... Uh, immensely to the conversation. <laughs> okay. I, I may I may think that you're still dreaming. No, listen, it's uh, yeah. I I hadn't thought about the idea of ramping rapidly. Uh, I know I thought about the idea that theoretically the new unboxed method might give them the opportunity to to ramp rapidly. Um, that's certainly something I think that many people have contemplated. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that anybody's thought about the idea of strategically trying to ramp the cyber cab as fast as possible right. uh, and, and just really blow it out. I mean, to, to, in order to get a strategic advantage, I think that's completely fresh and new. Right. Thank you. So we'll find out, you know, October 10th, you know, what announcement. I think the, the, the fast ramp strategic move works better if you have partners. Yeah. Right. If um, Baidu, BYD, other companies, and be more the robotaxi companies in China, the Waymos, et cetera. Um, well, well, before, and be, well, then before we end this particular uh, episode, we do need to talk about the fact that Uber uh, today made a deal mm -hmm. with uh, with BYD for, well, a deal. Yeah. Maybe over the next several years, we're going to buy somewhere around 100,000 cars. Right. <laughs> we're going to partner with you. And our maybe it's our people that are going to buy those. Anyway, it yeah. was a pretty nebulous thing. I'm sure it was just more headlines than anything else. But obviously, if Tesla solves FSD, which if, when they solve FSD later this year, um, that that uh, Uber thing is going to sound like like nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it already is relatively nonsense because um, yeah. there are deals already where Uber will help finance and discount yeah. Tesla cars Tesla, for yeah. it. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it's a, a small thing and, and it doesn't really affect anything. They do have Aurora in there who's going to help them create self-driving vehicles. But again, it's like there's no commitment. And again, it doesn't work yet. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. So, so, but you're talking about partners. I mean, people keep saying, Tesla doesn't need Uber, but mm -hmm. Uber needs Tesla. So right. it could very easily be that that Uber's announcement in October will be well. <laughs> we're going to make it make sure that our drivers become owners. Right. I mean, they, they may not they they can sit front of their television set and drive their cars now. <laughs> right. the, the other thing about you know the fact that you know partners could choose to make capital commitments before they make the money. They're, okay, I'll, I'll make money in 2026, 2027, right. when this thing is really going, but I'm gonna get the, the cars in place right. now, oh, yeah. right? Oh. The reason being, they're already losing a billion, $2 billion a year right. 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 on systems that do not work. And they've been doing that for year after year after year. Right. $2 billion, uh, or th let's, let's say $3 billion, rounder numbers for a $30,000 car, right? That's 100,000 vehicles. Mm -hmm. 100,000 vehicles that work. Yeah. Right. So if they work, the capital commitment is is, is a minor part of this whole thing because right. I'm going to get people used to it and then they're going to use it a bunch and then I'm going to make crap ton of money. Right. Right. And they only go use it a bunch if I come out at a buck a mile or if they come in at half the price or less of whatever I'm doing, half the price in China, which is even lower, or half the price out here. Right. Or maybe even a third the price. Right. Because eventually I'll get down to that price and make money with it. So I don't come out and say, okay, I'm going to price my rocket launches. I'm going to price my um, airplane tickets at a high price until I can get the volume. You right. price it out at this is the end state. I will be losing some money while I'm, I'm getting the people to adopt. Right. 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 So, so what? Oh shoot! Uh, just went out of my brain. Um, oh nuts! Ah. <laughs> I had a really, really good question for you, but I okay, uh, and uh, but I can't remember it now. It's okay, <laughs> okay. We'll think it up next time. So, okay. so just that time. So basically, we're going to see. You know, there, there's the case. I made my case for for the fast ramp. The production capability, I think, is there. It can the the cars could be made in China, and I can see why. Okay, good. I know what it was. Yeah. If you haven't done this already, if nobody's done it already, has anybody taken the numbers in terms of what Waymo is doing in San Francisco and used that as a template for a uh, nationwide or worldwide expansion? So, okay. So I've looked at um, some of the uh, Waymo and also Uber and stuff like that. So, yeah, Uber. Uber so I want to know what Waymo is doing. <laughs> In terms of um, of what they're, you know, like how big of, is their usage area? How many vehicles are they riding, driving? How many miles are they getting on those vehicles? And how can we use that information to extrapolate 
even worldwide. I mean, they're only in San Francisco, LA, and right. So, right. So they have like 500 vehicles total right now. Right. I think half in San Francisco, half in Phoenix, and then uh, you know some number. So it's like 300 vehicles, say in San Francisco, right? Yeah. They could only do part of San Francisco right. for a long time. Now they can do all of San Francisco, right? right? Uh, so San Francisco, not the whole Bay Area. So the Bay Area is seven million people. The San Francisco area is 700,000 people, so one tenth. Mm. San Francisco itself, the city, is only 50 square miles, mm. right? So that means going from end to end is seven miles across, seven miles across, right. right? So if I'm going from one end of the city to another, that's a seven mile drive, unless I'm winding it through maybe 10 miles, right? So before this, they could not even do the whole thing. They don't build like market. So they'd do like two, three mile drives, yeah. right? So they had, let's say 300 vehicles, they did um a million let's give them a million miles a month they weren't doing that but let's give them a million miles a month right so that means they're doing um 30,000 35,000 miles in a day mm -hmm. right um with four, 300 cars yeah with 300 cars so then each car is doing 120 miles right so each car doing 120 miles uh, $2 a mile 240 bucks Right. So and, and then they're doing a um, hundred some 40,000 miles, maybe in in a full year. Right. So maybe they can get eighty thousand dollars. So it's like decent enough money for the one vehicle. But in order to get to like a full city, like mm -hmm. I'm doing everything in the San Francisco area, mm -hmm. then you need to have like 20,000 vehicles or something like that. Right. And, and so that'd be like your whole taxi fleet, you know, dedicated guys driving a lot of miles, right. 100,000 miles, uh, doing a, a large service because they're doing very little. You know, yes, you see them a fair bit, yeah. but most of the rides are still Uber by right. and cabs uh, and, everything and cabs and whatever. Right. So they have not tried to like, I'm taking everything here. It's like it's still toy. They they weren't even allowing people who weren't invited to to try the system until just recently, right? You had to be invited to ride yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So three hundred. What's three hundred times uh, times uh, five hundred? It's uh, one hundred fifty thousand. One hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. One hundred fifty thousand. So right now, just taking that three hundred and multiplying in the United States, you beat one hundred fifty thousand vehicles just if you were getting the same usage as the as those are now. Right, right. And that doesn't uh, count Uber cabs or anything else. Okay. All right. right. That's what, and that's also yeah. also the the ride hailing companies, Uber, Lyft, et cetera, like that, they're doing 20%, uh 30% of their revenues from like the top 10, 20 cities. So it's um, so it's like New York, LA, San yeah. Francisco, London, you know, it's, it's the, the main cities where People um, need to have more care, care, yeah, airport type type stuff and other things, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll talk again next time. We'll see who's right October tenth, um, and maybe into into next year. So thank you. Join us next time. Like and subscribe.